Don't stand still. Don't let this guy stand in front of you. He hits George. Then he goes back on the ropes. The rope do The rope do Come on, George. You ain't nothing. Show me something. George is throwing punches. Bang, bang, bang. Everybody be saying, get on the roof, Ali. Get on the roof, man. Float like a butterfly. Sting like a bee. We're screaming at him in the corner. And he said, shut up. I know what I'm doing. This guy's not hurting me. It was a huge, brilliant gamble. The one that could have backfired on him very easily. I mean, it was just staying on the ropes, being hit. I did hurt this guy a lot. I hurt him more than a lot. But I've never faced anyone with that kind of bravery before. I hit him hard in the side. I mean, I got a good shot. And he said, is that all you got, George? And I remember thinking, yep, that's about it. Second round, Tommy stung him. Bam! Oh my God! <laughs> Long night. Tommy was like a cobra. He was bringing the fight to Ray. Combination that time by Hearns. Once more scores on Ray. The primary goal was to knock Ray Leonard out. Hearns stalking his man now. Ray sweating, I'm sweating too. I'm saying, Ray, move, 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 Ray. Right hand by Hearns stands Leonard straight up and he backs off. We're going to second round, third round, fourth round, and I'm like, oh. What is he doing? What is he doing? Because Tommy is winning. Bird's jab is bothering Leonard. There's no question about it. His jab was so accurate and so fast that my left I saw the swell. Tommy was tattooing. Bop, 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 bop. I mean, no if and buts. Tommy is winning the fight. Tommy knew that the only thing I had to do is box for two rounds. I'm the champ of the world. Basically, if he could have stayed on his feet, he would have won the fight. He was that far ahead on some of the judges' scorecards. We knew Ray was behind. So he had to knock him out. Leonard wants to put his man away right here. Does not want this fight to go to a decision. It was a race against the clock. Two of the greatest fighters of all time. And a right hand, and that hurts him. Hurts is not down yet. Ray, at that point, you know, smelled blood. Ray taunts him now. Two left hands against the rope. Hurts is reeling. I threw every punch that I had left. I just went on a rampage. Trying to go downstairs is Ray Leonard. Thomas was on the ropes, still holding his hands up. Blocking punches, but didn't have the energy to even hold his body in red. Hearns just trying to hang on here. Left hand sends Hearns back against the ropes again. And that's all. It's over. And Ray Leonard is the undisputed weatherweight champion of the world against a very gay Thomas Hearns. You cannot say enough about both of these fighters. Jim Cohan, Al Capone, and everybody else that had a name in America was sitting 10 or 15 rows back at that fight. Tony fought the same fight he fought the first time. Dempsey was in better shape and was crowding him, but he couldn't get to him. In the seventh round, he catches Tony with a bodacious look and follows it up with a six-punch combination. Tony is down. Tony is down. Tony is dazed. Tony is down. Tony is out. First time in boxing history. There is a clause that says the fighter scoring a knockdown must go to a neutral corner. Ironically, it was insisted upon by Dempsey. The referee kept waving at him to move over, and when he finally did, the time on the timekeeper's clock was five seconds. And they came back. Instead of starting on six, he started on one, two, three. As a consequence, Tunney is on the canvas for fully 14 seconds, according to the watches of all the reporters who were at the site. Eight, eight, nine, and Tunney is up. And now they're at it again. Tunney is backing away, and Dempsey is following Tunney. If he hadn't have had those extra five or six seconds, would his mind have been clear enough to stay away from Dempsey the remainder of the round? Tunney throws a right hand that lands behind Dempsey's ear, and Dempsey drops. The referee immediately starts the count. Doesn't send Tunney to a neutral corner. This created some controversy. As soon as Dempsey goes down, the referee Dave Barry is over him going, one, that uh, suggests to me the crooked referee. Whether there was some sort of fix or whatever that hasn't been proven, what remains today is the controversy of the long count.
hope to become the oldest heavyweight champion in boxing history. But despite the optimism of the crowd, few gave Foreman more than a puncher's chance. Left and a right inside by Moore. Sizzling. Solid left hand over the top, backing Foreman up again. Dark right by Moore, who seems to be gaining confidence. I like that he was starting to feel good about being champ and feel confident and trying to fulfill what everyone said he wasn't. The irony of this fight is both simple and complex. With nine minutes left and ahead on all judges' cards by a large margin, all Michael Moore had to do was stay away. Instead, he fought like a heavyweight champion. And I said right then I was going to lower it just a little bit. Is that on go on a right hand? An unbelievably close in right hand shot. Four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It happened. It happened. stage for a sensational matchup. Jeanette versus Sam McVeigh, a fight billed as the colored heavyweight championship of the world. Both fighters had been cruelly passed over by Jack Johnson, so to them, it was a payday. They had yet to learn the costs. The fight started, McVeigh caught Jeanette in the first round with the right hand. That right basically put Joe Jeanette on Queer Street. He just went dizzy. By the end of round 17, he had been down 21 times. Jeanette called every reserve he has, every technique he has, everything he has just to survive. Wakened from his days, Joe Jeanette poured it on. Now, it was Sam McVeigh who retreated. On and on it went. Round after round, knockdown after knockdown. This fight is over three hours of pummeling, beating, falling down, getting up. It's amazing even man was still alive. <laughs> it had been three and a half hours, and the 50th round beckoned each brutalized fighter. Pummeled, drained, and bleeding, Joe Jeanette reached down to his marrow for the strength to carry on. No boxer would ever be asked to answer so many bells. And for one of the two, was one bell too many. I can't. I can't. turn around this contest but then as we all know one punch in the heavyweight division can do just that Somebody back down again I think the shoulder's gone it's come out again he can't fight the corner look on as Danny Williams holds on for dear life in Mark Potter he is completely gone the shoulder he's now backed off in his corner he's using one arm again the guts of the Brixton fighter. But this is too early in the round, Adam. He wants to get himself out of there. He's surely he's called not to have realised this. Look at his arm. He's in a no-win situation and he will not give up. He's in no defence, obviously, against the left hook. And still they clap in the corner. Yep, they're, they're clapping him forward. But... Oh, he's got him! That's unbelievable! The Williams and Potter is out! It's over! It's over! the London arena did not scare the four to one on favourite. First round knockout. And I remember him hitting me. Well, I went back and then he punched me again. And I thought all my ligaments in my neck just stretched and I went out. I thought, we're going to have a one round knockout. Even when he put me down in round eight, I had to win. I just had to win. That's the game, that's it. For the life that I wanted, I had to win. Secure my family's life. I was ecstatic.
1958. On the edge of middle age, Archie Moore took on rugged light heavyweight Yvon Durrell, who at 29 was in the prime of his career. Is this tonight, Father Time? He was knocked down three times in the first round. He was caught cold. In front of your eyes, you see the old guy getting younger and the young guy getting older. She roared back, figured out Darrell, and finally knocked him out in the 11th round. Darrell seems to be on his way. Blood screaming from his nose. A cut over his right eye. Four back end moves again. Now he goes again. Eight. Struggling at nine. Ten. He is out. To get off the floor the way Archie did, then knock out Darrell, it was something to be old. fight a fight like that, you are never the same. There it was, 25 seconds left in the round. You know who was winning the fight, and all of a sudden... If he gets up, he probably wins the fight. went down for the second time. The fight appeared to be over, and that would have made this fight a classic. Down two times here in the tent. Corrales comes back, a straight right, now Castillo against the ropes. Corrales coming back, Castillo's in trouble, Weak steps in, and the fight is over! Corrales with a remarkable, dramatic turnaround to win this fight! I'll never forget being in that arena. People were stunned. That round and that moment kind of typifies, doesn't it, what boxing is all about. With this wonderful artistry and this excitement, there's always the unexpected. 